Hey guys, welcome back. I'm back in the kitchen with my friend Gurd, Gurdeep Loyal. And um, thank you so much for staying with me in the nice. kitchen and cooking me delicious food. He has not come empty handed. He has brought his beautiful book, Mother, Mother Tongue. Tongue. <laughs> it's actually, I love the um, title, Flavors of a Second Generation, because that is quite key to the whole yeah. idea of the book. Yeah, it's the whole idea of like different conversations between generations, first generation, second generation, and like actually how it food evolves as yeah. it goes through generations. Wow, amazing. And I have to say, there are everything in this book I want to cook. Uh, what are you cooking for us today? So today, it's the recipe on page 154, it is the Balti Cholet with star anise and mint. Oh my god, amazing. It's a good one. It is. So I'm going to let, go take over the kitchen, I'm going to go behind the camera and film this. I also just want to say, I'll leave all the details to the book uh, in the description and Gurd's uh, Instagram page as well. But if you haven't checked out the Malai chicken wings, which he cooked for us last week, oh my God, <laughs> they were so good. I think we've got one or two left over. We might have to go back for them. Uh, they are so good. So please do check that out and uh, don't forget to subscribe and let's get cooking. Yeah, so that is around six, um, kind of six small yeah. shallots or what about onions? If you're using onions, it depends how kind of pungent they are. Um, I would use maybe sort of two white onions okay. or if you're using like really... It depends because red onions can sometimes be really pungent or really kind of thingy. Shallots I always find have like a bit more of a sort of sharp flavour off them. Okay, so, so six small six or three small, yeah. large. Yeah. And then you're going to what, finely chop them? Just going to really finely chop them, yeah, because okay. they're going to go um, and form kind of the body of the of the Balti Cholet sauce. So that's the number of garlic and ginger and you're going to finally chop all Going to finally chop all of this up, yeah. Okay. There you go, just reversing the camera. <laughs> there you go. You're making me laugh. Everyone needs a chutney in the kitchen, amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to toast our whole spices. So the first one I've got is two teaspoons of cumin. Okay. I've then also got two teaspoons of coriander seeds. So four cloves are going to go in there. And then I'm going to add two black cardamom. So this is the black smoky cardamom, not the, the, the green. And then... This is the key for it, and it seems like a lot, and it is quite a lot, but it's star anise, and we're actually going to use three, which is quite a lot of star anise, but it's that kind of anise flavour that's kind of really signature to these. So I'm just going to toast those, and what you're doing is you're just releasing the aromas from those. So one or two minutes, don't let them burn, keep moving them around, but if you do this, you get the most flavour out of them. So I know one of the questions people are going to ask is, what if I can't find black cardamom? Because this yeah. is one um, spice yeah. you can't find in supermarkets. No, I mean, you can leave it out, but otherwise you can use something like caraway seeds and maybe add a spoon of those because that kind of has a slightly similar um, note. Or well, actually even something like nigella seeds, if you use a bit of nigella seed, it kind of has that like earthy, very slight sort of smoky bitterness. Maybe add in a bit of that, because that might give you that kind of similar element. Um, but if not, you can leave it out. You can leave it out and maybe use kind of um, a smoked salt or something like that. But okay. it's, yeah. Or Do it in a spice grinder or a pestle mortar, 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 whatever you've got. And we're just going to grind that down to a powder. Now that we've got the whole spices ground down, we're going to add a few other spices, but these are already sort of powdery. So the first one is amchor, which is um, dried mango powder. Yep. So we're going to add about a tablespoon of that. Then we're also going to add about a teaspoon of mace, which is the outer husk of the nutmeg, which I love the flavour of. Um, we're going to add some turmeric, which gives a nice sort of earthiness. A about a teaspoon, yeah. Um, now this is an optional ingredient. It's hing, which is asafoetida, which has a kind of garlicky, pungent kind of flavour. It's quite easy to find in Indian shops. No, actually, you can find them in uh, a lot of supermarkets now. Mm, okay. It's it's a good one. 
it just has that like nice earthiness and also it counters the effects of short of um chickpeas. <laughs> so I have to keep that in. Um and then the other ones which are going in, now you can grind this to a powder, but I actually quite like to keep it in um slightly flaky, is a bit of chili Ooh. with some heat. Um and then the final one, and again, you can grind this to a powder, but I actually like to keep it whole, um, is some fenugreek, which is also known as kasuri mithi. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the spices that we've just ground, yeah. put those in with these. So you've got the whole spices and then the dry spices in together. And then what we're gonna do is to turn that into a paste with some tomato puree and some water. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I've got some tomato puree which I'm just going to add to that. I'm going to add about three or four tablespoons of that. And then what I'm going to add is about 100 ml of water. And what we're going to do is just to actually mix that all together. And that is our paste. Beautiful. So it's sort of tomato-y. You've got all of those roasted spices, um, but then you've also got those dried spices and then you've got kind of the tangy elements of like the amchor, which is a little bit sort of tart, the kind of pungency of the um, aspetida, bit of heat from the chili. Um, that's our paste, ready. So next we're gonna add about three or four tablespoons of oil. Um, you want enough because there's quite a lot of schlots and you really wanna cut those down. And then what we're gonna do is add these schlots and you just wanna cook those right down Probably take about at least five or six minutes. You don't want to do it on too high a heat. You're wasting shallots. <laughs> I did see that. Um, I love shallots, onions, slash anything. Anything. So we're not going to cook those too high. I'm going to okay. turn that down a little bit. But you know, give those. Do you want a colour? You kind of want them to go sort of translucent with maybe okay. a kind of golden colour. So. You're definitely not browning them. You just want them to kind of turn But it will take at least sort of four or five minutes. Okay. So these have had about three or four minutes and you can see they're sort of, they're turning translucent. They're not browned, but they're nice and translucent. This is the point we're gonna add the ginger and garlic. Okay. Oh, that smells so good. Just the way it hits the pan. And this we're gonna fry out for about another minute or two. Again, we're not browning it. We're just sort of letting it cook out so that raw taste goes, but we don't want it to blacken or darken too much. So it's had about two minutes. So you can see it's kind of nice and translucent. It's not browned. And this is the point that we're going to add all of that spice paste. That's just going to go right into there. Oh, it just, the, the spice flavor hits as soon as it gets yeah. into the pan. Oh my God. And again, this is why you don't want it to, you don't want it to burn. So we're going to give that just about, maybe just one minute to kind of gently cook out. And then, a little bit longer. So that spice paste has been there for about a minute or so. Uh, it's starting to cook through. This is the point that you're going to add two tins of drained chickpeas. Now, my mum would never, <laughs> ever make sure they with tin chickpeas, but I'm not my mum. So that's okay. And she has tried these and she loves them, even though she would swear by sure only ever being made with overnight. chickpeas soaked overnight. Yeah. But hey, that's just not something I'll ever remember to do and yeah. that's okay. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you do remember to do it, then you know that we'll get, they'll have that kind of extra kind of deliciousness and the texture that that gives. Yeah. But if you don't, just cheat. Cause I am, and that's okay. Exactly. <laughs> so in go the chickpeas. And what we're gonna do is let these cook for about a minute or so. And what we're doing is we're just coating those chickpeas in all of those spices, all of that garlic, all of those shallots that have now turned really translucent. And basically this is our sort of quick fire way of getting those flavors straight into the chickpeas immediately before we add any more liquid. So that's been cooking for about a minute. Um, this is the point that we're gonna add some salt. So we're gonna season it at this point. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon and a half not too much of salt. Um, I'm also gonna add some sugar. Now, this is something that, you know, a lot of really interesting Indian food has, and it's that whole, we would call it kata mitta, which means 
sour sweet. Yeah. And um, what you'll see is we've got the tomatoes going in and at the end, we're actually gonna put in a little bit of tamarind. So this sugar just helps to balance a lot of the flavors yeah. and also gives you that katamita, which is a really like yeah. delicious flavorful Very thing to do. Umami. Very umami. So I'm using dark brown sugar. Um, we're gonna add about three or four tablespoons. So it feels like quite a bit at this stage, but it can take it because there's a lot of tomato and tartness yeah. going in. So we're gonna give that a little mix. And then the last thing that's gonna go in is two whole tins of tomatoes. And then also, just to loosen that up a bit, we're gonna add 100 ml of water. Stir that through. And we're gonna let that cook and simmer for about 15 minutes. Okay. Um, and we're gonna cover that with a lid. Okay. So these have had about 12, 13 minutes. We're just gonna check in on them. Ooh, there wow. they are, simmering nicely. Now what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna turn that down and then what we're gonna do is make our tamarind and mint paste which is gonna go into here. Yeah. So I'm just gonna turn that down, put the lid back on, and cover them fully and let's get going with the paste. Here I have got about 20 grams of mint leaves, so quite a lot of mint. Um, and to that we are going to add some tamarind. Now this is a concentrate so I'm gonna use probably about one spoon. Okay. But if you're using one of the sort of, if you're using fresh pulp, you would maybe add a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and if you're using um, one of the ones that's not a concentrate, again, you can probably add a bit more, but probably not gonna add more than about that because no, it's quite intense, that is, yeah. yeah. Maybe even just about that much. Do you need a bit of water? Then? Yeah, and then we're gonna add 50 ml of water and then we're just gonna whiz that up to a paste. So about enough water just to be able to whiz it up, about 50 ml and then so we'll whiz that to a paste. Mm, it's really good. It's really like sort of minty and tart. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn this down. We're just going to stir this through. So what this does is you've got all this kind of really sort of heady, spiced, kind of star anise -y kind of chickpeas. And then what this does is it gives it that kind of fresh, minty kind of tamarind lift. So we're gonna ripple this through and then we're gonna let that cook out for sort of a final 10 to 15 minutes just so that they can kind of thicken and you get like a nice extra sauce. So I'm just gonna ripple that through. There it goes. Changes color slightly as well with the, with the mint and the tamarind. And now we're just gonna leave that with the lid off just because oh. we're, gonna, we're gonna let that thicken up. Um, for about another sort of 10 to 15 minutes. And then we're ready to serve up. These have been cooking for about 12, 13 minutes. And what you can see is that, you know, a lot of that water's evaporated off and it's just sort of really intensified. It's thickened, it's kind of really nicely coating those chickpeas. You've kind of it's got- It's deep in the colour. It's really deep in the colour. That's the tamarind that we've added. Um, and you know, if you like them a little bit runnier, you can kind of, you can serve them up earlier. If you like a really thick sauce, you can keep cooking these out for a little bit longer and that will make them really intense. Um, but I think for my, what I like, this is about done. Okay, okay, great. Serve for before tomorrow. Ta da Right, I'm gonna steal the mic so we can yeah. have it in the middle. So they can hear okay. my, ooh, are we gonna, lovely. Are we gonna spoon these into? Yes, so that is a proper balti. Balti means bucket, it's a very glamorous word. <laughs> yeah. And this I bought from Jaipur many, many years ago. Um, and this is the kind of balti. It's like the curry house balti. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, balti work. If you can find one, you know, it's kind of a fun, it is quite fun to serve. I think like, it's really yeah, fun. It's really cute. But, but I love that you've got an actual bucket with a handle. That's like the kind of thing we'd have in my mum's bin. I love it. Oh, lovely. Really love so, it. So yeah, right. go for it. So we're going to just spoon these up into here just so that you can see how thick that sauce has become and the way that it coats all of those chickpeas. Tinned chickpeas, remember? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> the cheats version. It smells incredible, guys. And then what we would do always with Cholet is just finish with a good scattering of red onion. That is the Bounty Cholet chickpeas with star anise and mint. Oh my God. They smell um, quite different to the Chole I make, obviously because of the combination yeah. of spices that you've used. I cannot wait any longer. I'm going to get, get a get spoon. spoon. Yeah. Poor people complain that we're sharing from the same bowl and pan and stuff. Let's get our Let's own. Let's go. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're greedy. I want to try my own. Okay. I know. It's so hot, and I always do that. Like eat really hot food. Okay. Oh. You need a little. You need a little bit of. Oh, red onion. On yeah. Okay. Right. Can you see cheers again? Ooh, <laughs> cheers. 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 You're going in, I'm no. waiting for one more second. Mm, oh my God. Oh, that, wow. Do you like it? Oh, I love <laughs> it. Mm. It's not overly star and easy. It's not overly minty, but it's still... I have to say that is absolutely delicious, but oops, the fridge. Um, that is so different, which is beautiful, to my chole. It is like, um, it's got a lot of sweetness, but the tanginess, and it's got uh, warmth. Mm. It's got that warmth from the really lovely spice mix that you've added. It's that, that is a little bit of that black cardamom, beautiful. that like, the mentholiness. Yeah, but I can really the taste the mm. star anise. Oh my God, that is stunning well done oh, you well absolutely done you. beautiful <laughs> listen thank you so much no, for your time thank you he's made my day if you haven't checked out like i mentioned earlier check out the malai chicken wings they are stunning and this chole is something you definitely need to try balti chole by girl what i love is that you are a punjabi i'm a punjabi we both make chole <laughs> But they are so different. That's Completely. exactly what it's all about. You know, I try and make this channel where people like you, this is amazing. This is so new to me yeah. and I absolutely love it. Same, same, but different. And same, you, same, and but you, so different. And when you would never use tin chick like me. No, I would never. <laughs> um, enjoy this with some really lovely fresh naan, chapati, pulao. Puris. With puris. Always oh my God, at home. Oh, that's brilliant. And don't forget to subscribe. All details are in the description below. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.